your life this year all things will be possible for you this year it will be a year of miracle a year of signs and wonders you will never be the same again in jesus name i pray that every step of the way this year you walk this way miracle you walk that way miracle you stay in your house miracle right there where you are there's a miracle with your name attached unto it i believe i believe i believe in my life all things are possible in my family all things are possible with my children, all things are possible. In my profession, all things are possible. Everywhere I go, everything I do, every place I am, all things are possible. The door is open for you. Enter in right now. Enter in into the power of God, open your mouth. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. In my life, all things possible. In my family, all things possible. In my profession, all things possible. This year, a year of possibility for me. A year of possibility for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we come with faith at this time. I announce, I proclaim, in everybody's life here, all things are possible in Jesus' name. Lord, the God of the Bible and the God of Genesis, I pray that this moment and this month, will be the genesis of supernatural things in every life in Jesus name Lord I declare that this January until the end of the year signs and wonders miracles and manifestations in every life in Jesus name and I pray Lord you open the gates of heaven open the windows of heaven and shower the supernatural on every life in Jesus' name. I pray that this year there will be progress. This year there will be promotion. This year there will be the supernatural. And your people will know that this year will be the very best they have ever lived in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. You are going to discover that this year will be very different in your life. That every prayer we pray here, God will answer. And all the things we bring before the Lord, the Lord will give us a positive practical empowering answer in jesus name i'm talking to you on new progress and partnership in the new year new progress and partnership in the new year in the past if you have always been taking steps backward and that you find that december is always worse than january and that the new year has always been worse than the previous year. This year, we're going to reverse everything. This year for you will be a year of progress. It will be a year of promotion. And it will be a year of partnership with God in Jesus' name. Connect two things in your mind. One, progress. The other one, partnership. As you come into partnership with the Lord, you're going to discover the great progress in your life look at genesis chapter 26 genesis chapter 26 i read from verse 3 genesis chapter 26 we're reading from verse 3 this is talking about isaac 
It says in verse 3, So John in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. The Lord is saying, Sojourn, abide, dwell, live in this land that it is in this place where you are now. God will bless you. In this family where you are now, God will bless you. In this church where you are now, God will bless you. Nobody will drive you away from your inheritance. The blessing God has ordained for you in this land, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. Sojourn in this land, and I will bless thee. We're looking at chapter 28. Genesis 28, verse 15. Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. This year, all your journeys, the Lord will protect you. On the land, on the sea, in the air, anywhere you are going, at the center of the will of God, your life will be preserved in Jesus' name. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. The Lord has spoken a lot of things to you. He has given you a lot of promises. And the Lord is saying, He will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you until he has done that which he has spoken of concerning you. Chapter 39. In chapter 39, I'm reading from verse 2 and verse 3. Chapter 39, reading from verse 2 and verse 3. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Can you see what the Lord is saying? We're ready concerning Isaac. We're ready concerning Jacob. We're ready concerning Joseph. The very promise of God to all of them and to all of us that I will be with thee. That's the presence of the Lord. And then he says, I will keep you in every place that you go. That's the protection of the Lord. And then he also says, everything I've told you of, that I will bless you. I'm going to fulfill everything. That is the promise of God being fulfilled in our lives. And I pray that this year, everything the Lord has told you, everything the Lord has revealed unto you, it will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. I was waiting for your amen there. New progress and new partnership in the new year. New progress and new partnership in the new year. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, prosperity through God's presence. Prosperity, prosperity through God's presence, by the Lord being present in your life, by the Lord being prominent in your life, that every time you are thinking of the Lord, every time you are meditating on the Lord, every time you are praying unto the Lord, every time you are thinking of the promise of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the provision of God, Jehovah Jireh, in your life every time, it is that presence of God that will bring prosperity. This year, poverty is cancelled in Jesus' name. 
in the time of farming for the rest of the world, abundance of supply, multiplication of the substance that we need will be granted unto us in Jesus' name. Prosperity through God's presence. Number two, promotion through godly purity. Promotion through godly purity. That is when we say godly purity, you say, is there a kind of purity that is not godly? We're talking about a kind of purity that comes from God, that comes through praying to God. A purity that comes through consecration unto God. A purity that comes through the life that is submissive, dedicated, and devoted, consecrated unto the Lord. We're talking about promotion through godly purity. Point number three, protection by God's power. Protection by God's power. We come to number one. What's your number one over there? Prosperity through God's presence. We're coming to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 3. Genesis chapter 26, verse 3. So John in this land, and I will be with thee. Have you seen the connection there? Have you seen the connection there? So John in this land, if you do that, if you are obedient, if you are not moving here and there, if you are not unpredictable, some people are not predictable, where do you find them now, this Sunday? Where do you find them the following Sunday? They are not predictable. Where do they walk now? Where do they walk another time? They are not predictable. So married people are not predictable. They are with the wife now, then they leave that wife, they go to another place. They are not predictable. If you will be stable, if you will be predictable, sojourn in this land, dwell in this land, abide in this land, stay, remain in this land. And then he says, if you do that, I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed. I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Look at the prosperity that follows. As a result of the fulfillment of the promise of God, I will be with thee. Look at verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. Sojourn in this land. Abide in this land. Don't shift or move here and there. And I seek obey. And he sowed in that land and received in the same year. Tell me. Tell me out loud. And hundredfold everything you have, God will multiply by 100. Everything you give to the Lord, God will multiply by hundred. Everything you sacrifice, everything you lay on his altar, he will multiply a hundredfold in Jesus' name. And the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed him. Look at verse 13. And the man was great and went forward and he grew until he became very great. Can you see the, you know, because of the presence of the Lord with him? And then it says he was abiding there. He obeyed the Lord. As a result of that obedience to the Lord, the man went forward and he grew and he increased and he was prospered until he became very great. Look at verse 27. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you. And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. God's presence. It is that presence of God in our lives that makes us prosperous. When you are born again, it's present in your life. The Spirit bearing witness with your heart that you are a child of God. 
born again is present in your life when you are sanctified it becomes prominent in your life not only that he is present you are sanctified is prominent your mind your thoughts your conversation your lifestyle your habit everything about you christ becomes prominent in your life as you are sanctified you are saved is present you are sanctified is prominent you are baptized in the holy ghost it becomes preeminent in your life the all in all in your life it saturates you it fills you it empowers you it enables you it energizes you and it clothes you with the divine authority from above saved is present sanctified is prominent and when you are filled and baptized and saturated and immersed in the holy ghost it becomes preeminent in your life and these people said in verse 28 we saw certainly that the lord is with thee and we said let there be now an oath between us even between us and thee and let us make a covenant with thee that thou will do us no hurt as we have not touched thee and as we have done unto thee nothing but good and have sent thee away in peace thou art now blessed of the lord you see that the testimony of the people that will be the testimony concerning you in jesus name by the way, we've been still saying, I seek, I seek, I seek. What does that mean? What kind of life did he live? And how will you know that this same lifestyle of I seek is in your life? That he was I seek at that time and spiritually you are an I seek today. And the presence of the Lord will bring this great irreversible prosperity in your life. Write that name, Isaac. Write it vertically. I S A A C. As you look at Isaac, his name describes who he was. I, he was incorruptible. Incorruptible. He looked at his father, Abraham. He followed his father, Abraham. And all those communities where he lived, he was not like a chameleon that will take on the color and the habit and the lifestyle of the people around. He was different, incorruptible. That's the eye that begins Isaac. And when you give your life to the Lord and you are born again, you are a child of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. This man, this woman, this lady is incorruptible. The world will try to come in. The defilement all around you will try to come in. And the nature of evil, of sinning, will try to penetrate. But you'll find that oil and water do not mix. And because oil and water do not mix, you have this incorruptibility, you have this innocence, and you have this lifestyle that is totally different from the people of the world. And it is that that made the blessings of God to continue in the life of this Isaac. S. Submissive. Have you seen that as the father took him, and he was asking the question. He didn't know it was a sacrifice. My father, behold the fire. My father, behold the wood. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And the father said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. And then they got to the place of sacrifice. And what did I see discover? His father drew him near. His father took the rope and bound him. His father laid him on the altar. His father brought out the knife. He was to sacrifice him to the Lord. And this young man, a teenager at that time, around the age of 17, he never bulged, he never kicked, he never shouted, submissive, and if in your life, 
you are submissive to God. This year, I will be that I seek. I'll be incorruptible. I'll be that I seek. I will be submissive. A, hey, abiding. Abiding. The Lord said, abide here. Sojourn here. Dwell here. Remain here. Abide here. And I will bless you. And you abode there. An abiding person. If my word abides in you, and you abide in me, you will ask whatsoever you will. It shall be done unto you. It is this characteristic of incorruptibility. This characteristic of submission. This characteristic of abiding that made I seek the person he was and that made the blessing of God to come upon his life. And I pray that this year you'll be incorruptible. This year you'll be submissive. And this year you'll be abiding in Jesus' name. The next aid there is abstaining, abstaining, abstaining. You see, as you look at Isaac, he was here, you couldn't see the stain of the community around him. You couldn't see the defilement of the language, or the proverbs, or the song. You couldn't hear the songs of the world from his mouth. You couldn't see the dressing of the world on him. You couldn't see anything of the defiled, devilish, demonized world around him. You couldn't find that on Isaac. No wonder the Lord so blessed that man because he was incorruptible, because he was submissive, because he was abiding, and because he was abstaining. And then see, consecrated. Point number two now, promotion through godly purity. Promotion through godly purity. We're coming back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. And we're reading here from verse 2. Genesis chapter 39. And we're looking at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. The Lord will make everything you do prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. You see what the Lord is saying? He said, get near, come near, I will bless you. Come near, I will prosper you. Come near, I, I will promote you. It doesn't matter where you are. At this time, Joseph had been sold into Egypt. At this time, he was in a strange land. And it was not of his own making. And yet, in this place where he was, the blessing of God rested upon his life. Look at verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. All that he did, everything you do this year, the Lord will make it to prosper in Jesus' name. Well, eventually something happened that he was sent into prison. But even there in that prison, the Lord was with him. Everywhere you go, the Lord will be with you. Look at chapter 41. Chapter 41, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. According unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have made thee over, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. All the land of Egypt. Promotion came. Promotion is coming. I said, get ready. Promotion is coming. It will come in your life in Jesus' name. The partnership of the Lord. 
the presence of the Lord, bringing such a great prosperity upon your life that everything you do is prospered by the power of the Lord and then you are promoted, you are exalted and you are lifted up to the next place. Look at Psalm 105 and see what the Bible says about his promotion and see what the Lord is saying unto you. Your promotion will come. Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 105, verse 17, he sent a man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, and he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of, of the people, and he let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler over all his substance to bind his princess at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. To teach his senators wisdom you see the promotion that came to him? The question is, how did that promotion come? Come back to Genesis chapter 39. I'm reading from verse 7. If you want to have the presence of the Lord with you, the prosperity of the Lord with you, the promotion of the Lord for you, the protection and preservation of the Lord in your life, there is a kind of life that Joseph lived, a kind of life that pleased the Lord. And the Lord said, every prophetic utterance that has been said concerning you, every dream I showed you, everything I told you you'll become, you're going to become, I pray that this year will be the year of your fulfillment in Jesus' name. But look at this, Genesis chapter 39 verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. They said, master will not know this. And you are not the one making advances to me. I am the one making advances to you. Don't think about this. Don't you feel lonely? You are not with your parents. Don't you feel lonely? You're not with your brothers. Don't you feel lonely? You're not married yet. Are you just walking and walking? You need to release yourself. And I'm willing to do whatever we're going to do together. Lie with me. In verse 8, but tell me. But tell me. But tell me. You cannot receive from God. If you don't receive, if you don't refuse the temptress, if you are yielding to the temptress, she will not like it if I don't yield, if I don't cooperate with her, if I don't do what she's expecting, she'll not be happy. I'd rather make her happy and make God unhappy. You will send yourself to hell by making tempters and temptresses happy. It says, but he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. The master has kept you to himself because you are the wife. The master has given me liberty in everything except this one liberty. I don't have any liberty to touch you because you are my master's wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You see, because he refused. Because he remained holy and righteous and pure and sanctified and saintly that's why the presence of god that's why the prominence of the lord that's why the preeminence of the lord that's why the promotion of the lord came unto him i pray god will keep you pure 
God will keep you holy. And all those temptations coming from women, coming from men, coming from prostitutes, and coming from all these people that are willing to give their body and lose heaven, I pray that those temptations will not overcome you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. I pray God will give you wisdom. God will give you a quick action. Get out of the hand of Jezebel and out of the hand of Potiphar's wife in Jesus' name. Let me give you these seven words for you to have the victory in your life. You'll have victory over sin this year. I said you'll have victory over sin this year. Number one, refuse. Number one, tell me, refuse. She talks this way, she talks that. By the way, it may be a man tempting you, a woman. Refuse him. Refuse her. Refuse the language. She may come with aggressive, aggressive attitude, almost to pounce on you, and then frown the face. You must do this. Even when she comes with anger, and when she comes with aggression, refuse. Or she might change and say what I'm saying is, after all, pastor will not know this after all, daddy will not know this after all, my husband will not know this after all, the servants will not know this, and then change language. The sin is, number one, tell me out loud, refuse. Number two, rebuke. Rebuke. You see what Joseph did? It was a rebuke to her. You are my master's wife. You should be a dignified woman. You should have self-respect and self-esteem. You should preserve yourself. Rebuke her. Rebuke the sinner. Rebuke the tempter. Rebuke the temptress. Number three, resist. Resist. That as she was saying that every time, every time, and Joseph was saying no. I said no yesterday. I'm still saying no today. You are my master's wife. This will not happen. This cannot happen. You resist. And then she said, how oh, can I do this and sin against my God? This is going to be a great sin. And then number four, remove. You get yourself out of that place. You remove yourself out of that vicinity. That is how to overcome. You refuse. You rebuke. You resist. You remove. Move away. Move away. Are you staying in the presence of the temptress every time? Allow her to keep talking and talking until you overcome, until you are subdued. How do you stay in the, in the presence of that tempter, that man? And then she keeps on talking, keeps on talking, keeps on talking. Remove yourself out of that place. Remove. Number five, reject. Reject. Might, you know, give you this and give you that. So I have to suck you in, into that kind of a pit, into that kind of evil thing. You reject. Number six, reduce. Well, you see, in the case of Joseph, he had to walk there. He had to walk in that house. But he was reducing drastically any opportunity of their being together privately. But that woman was watching. That woman was watching when nobody would be there. He, she knew that Joseph was reducing the time and the contact between them. You make sure you do that every time you reduce. And then number seven is to refrain, to refrain. You see what eventually happened? He grabbed him by the coat and he said, this sin, you must commit this sin. I need this and you want this. It must be done. And then he left his coat in her hand and fled away. It's better to lose your coat than your conscience. 
Better to lose your coat than your conscience. Better to lose the garment than your grace. It's better to leave that cloth than your salvation. Therefore, he went away, he left, he ran away. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. They want you to steal with them, consent thou not. They want, they want you to commit fornication, adultery with them, consent thou not. They want you to give bribes with them, consent thou not. They want you to be worldly with them like them, consent thou not. We're looking at uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're looking at verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 10 and I'm reading to you from verse 2 Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2 Thus says the Lord learn not the way of the heathen learn not the language of the heathen learn not the pattern of life of the heathen learn not the practice of the heathen life learn not the lifestyle of the heathen don't learn how to dress like them how to talk like them how to move like them how to yield to them how to drink like them how to eat like them learn not the way of the heathen that's what the lord is telling us ephesians chapter 5 in ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 11 Ephesians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no friendship with the unfruitful work of darkness. Have no familiarity with the unfruitful works of darkness. If uh, those women want to impose themselves on you in the office, and they always come your way, they, their lives are useless and they want to make your life useless they want to impose themselves on you you know these days of email and text and telephone and you know what have you facebook and twitter and everything they want to use all means that they want to capture your life they want to take over your life and they want to impose themselves on your life it says you are the one that will not allow any fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame look at this woman the wife of the master, the wife of Potiphar. What a shameful thing. Degrading. And what a dirty thing, defiling. It says, it is even a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You will keep yourself. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. In First Timothy chapter 5, First Timothy chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 22. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. They want to sin, they're already sinning with other people. They want to pass HIV AIDS unto you. And it says, neither be partakers of other men's sin. This woman, maybe she has done it with other people. And now Joseph came and, and she wanted to transfer her old habit, defiling habit, adulterous habit, fornicating habit onto Joseph. And then it says, be not partaker with other men's sins. You'll not be a partaker in Jesus' name. I said you'll not be a partaker in Jesus' name. Keep thyself pure. You may not be able to keep the whole world pure, but keep thyself pure. You may not be able to keep all your office pure, but yourself, yourself as an individual, keep yourself pure pure you may not be able to influence every woman around you and to keep them pure but yourself keep yourself pure you may not be able to influence all the men around you and keep all those men pure but yourself yourself even if everybody is going to go to hell if everybody is going to perish you want to determine that by yourself you are going to be pure keep yourself pure you'll be pure and righteous and holy in jesus name and how did Joseph do it? Give it to me once again. Number one, he refused. Tell me number one. Tell me number two. Tell me number three. Tell me number four. Tell me number five. Tell me number six. Number seven. It will happen in your life. I come to point number three now. Protection by God's power. Protection. 
by God's power, the power of the Lord is available to protect us. It will protect us from all evil in Jesus' name. We're coming back to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. And we're reading about this, Joseph, the protection of the Lord, wonderful. The preservation of the Lord, what a wonderful scene. And all the blessings of the Lord upon the life of this Joseph. And the Lord is starting us this year with this Genesis, reminding us of Enoch. Reminding us of Noah, reminding us of Abraham, reminding us of Isaac, reminding us of Jacob, reminding us of Joseph, and he's saying, if these people followed me, and I blessed them, and I increased them, and I multiplied them, and I became present and prominent and preeminent in their life, the same thing God says, I am God, I change not. He can do the same thing in your life, he will do the same thing in your life, in Jesus' name. This year, there'll be protection for you. This year, there'll be preservation for you. Everything belonging to you, your soul, your spirit, your body, your profession, your family, the Lord will protect everything in Jesus' name. Protection by God's power. We're coming to Genesis chapter 39, I'm reading from verse 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. Wait a minute. The wife told a lie to this man, to Potiphar, and said, see the slave. No father here, no mother here, no relative here. He's a stranger. Look at this slave. Look at this stranger. He came unto me. He wanted to defile me. And when I shouted, he left his coat in my hand. Now, Potiphar could have killed Joseph in the heat of anger. In the heat of that strange information, Potiphar could have killed him and nobody will ask of Joseph. His father, was, his father even thought he was dead already. His mother was not available. The brothers were not there. Nobody was there to defend him. No lawyer, no solicitor was there to handle his case. He could have killed him, but God protected him because God was preserving him for the throne. He is preserving you for destiny. You will reign in Jesus' name. And do you know that eventually this Joseph became greater than Potiphar? You'll be greater than your enemy. Became greater than Potiphar's wife. You'll be greater than all the temptresses in Jesus' name. You know, if you know who you are, if you know what God has ordained for you, you will not lower yourself to come to the level of Jezebel because you'll be higher, higher, higher above Jezebel in Jesus' name. You know, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to bring you to their level. Be as sinful as we are. Be as fleshly as we are. Be as promiscuous as we are. Be as careless as we are. Be as carnal as we are. And be a child of hell like we are. That's what they're trying to do. But Joseph said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be higher. I'm going to be greater than all these people. That same promise of God, protection of the Lord upon Joseph will be upon your life in Jesus' name. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Praise the Lord. The Lord was with Joseph. He will be with you. I said he will be with you. Look at this in chapter 45, Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. God did send me before you to preserve life. The power of God preserved this man. 
and then he was to be a preserver of the lives of other people and they said it's the lord that did it it's the lord that allowed it everything that happened to me has been the hand of the lord and i'm not going to go back to sin i'm going to remain faithful unto the lord so that the power of the lord and the purpose of the lord and the plan of the lord will be fulfilled in my life i pray that the plan of god will be fulfilled in your life the purpose of God will be fulfilled in your life. That whatever happens in the vicissitudes of life, in the various changing circumstances of life, the Lord himself, that place he has ordained for you, that place he has earmarked for you, you will be there in Jesus' name. Chapter 50, verse 20. Chapter 50, we're looking at verse 20. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it says in verse 20, but as for you, Ye thought to evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. He said, you wanted me to be forgotten. You wanted that dream the Lord had given me not to be fulfilled. As for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. What the Lord had ordained for your life, why you are created, why you exist here on earth, a plan, that purpose, the Lord will fulfill in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you love God for the love of his sick soul, if you love God for the love of a sanctified soul, if you love God with the love of a baptized person, and you are saved, you are sanctified, and you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And because of that, you have the love of God that saturates your heart. It says, if you love God and you love the commandments of God, you love God, you love the ways of the Lord, you love God, you love everything the Lord wants you to do. It says, this we know, that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And the Lord shall deliver you from every evil work. He'll deliver you from every Jezebel. He'll deliver you from every Potiphar's wife. He'll deliver you from every tempter. He'll deliver you from every temptress. He'll deliver you from every sinner, every worldly man, every worldly, a worldly woman, all the people that want to pull you down to get you to their level of degradation. The Lord will deliver you from them in Jesus' name. The evil of sin, the evil of Satan, the evil of sorcery, and the evil of, the, of this present age and this present world, the Lord will deliver you from every form of evil in Jesus' name and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to, him, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, we're reading what the Lord has promised and what the Lord is going to do concerning every one of his people. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, he raises up the poor out of the doors. He raises you up and lifts up the beggar from the, from the dungeon. He lifts you up to set them among the princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth at the Lord's and he has set the world upon them he will keep the feet of his saints he will keep the feet of his saints the Lord will keep you he'll keep you in the day he'll keep you in the night He'll keep you when the tempters are around. He will keep you when the temptresses are around. He will keep you when evil is around. He will keep you when Satan the devil is around. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. 
John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ praying for you. And I pray that the prayer of Jesus Christ for you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. John chapter 17 verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition. You will not be a son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come unto thee. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. This year, the joy of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You are not of the world. I said you are not of the world, even as Christ is not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given unto them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, I in them, and thou in me, I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, even as thou hast loved me. If we remain in the Lord, abide in the Lord, the love of God for us will be that the love of God for Jesus, and that love will preserve you. That love will protect you. That love will prosper you. That love will promote you. And that love will preserve you unto the everlasting kingdom in Jesus' name. This is the year of progress and this is the year of partnership with the Lord. As we remain pure, as we remain sanctified, we remain holy by the grace of God and by His overflowing love in our hearts. I pray that all that God has revealed unto us during this revival time, everything will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Rise up and get into the new progress. Rise up and get into the new partnership. Rise up and get into the new fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. This is your year. This is your year. Take it serious. Take it serious and get all your mind, all your soul, all your spirit attached and totally giving unto the Lord. Let's come to the Lord now. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Make it a year of prayer. A year of purity, a year of the power of God in your life, a year of the fulfillment of the promise of God in your life. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. Call upon the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. Be the I seek of today. Be the I seek today. Incorruptible. Be the I seek today, submissive. Be the I seek today, abiding. Be the I seek today, abstaining. Be the I seek today, consecrated fully, completely unto the Lord. Incorruptible, submissive, abiding, abstaining, consecrated. Give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Don't come off the altar. Don't kick. Abraham away from the altar. Don't kick your father away from the altar. Abide there. Abide there. Abide there. Incorruptible. Don't let this world corrupt you. Don't let their language corrupt you. 
and don't let any sin in this world, the practice of the world, don't let it corrupt you. Incorruptible, incorruptible. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the Isaac of today, let the Jacob of today, let the Joseph of today say, Amen. This year will be a prosperous year in Jesus' name. A year of promotion in Jesus' name. And a year when you will climb at the ladder, you will get to the top of the ladder, you will be head, you will not be tail, in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, and Lord, we present ourselves before you. We pray that your grace will flow into every life. Make us incorruptible. Make us submissive. Make us abiding. Make us abstaining. Make us consecrated. And let the prosperity of heaven come into every life in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we come before you. We know that as we go into the world, there might be a Jezebel there, there may be a temptress there, there may be a Potiphar's wife there, there may be whoever is there, Lord. Our life will be for you and for you alone in Jesus' name. We pray that your grace will be in every life. Your power will be in every life. The knowledge of the Almighty will be in every life in Jesus' name. We say yes to the Lord, we say no to the devil. We say yes to the Lord and we say no to the tempter. We say yes to the Lord and we say no to the persecutor. We say yes to the Lord and we say no to the worldly woman. Lord, they will not influence our lives. They will not corrupt our lives. They will not destroy our lives. We say no to them every time in Jesus' name. And we pray that the promotion of the Lord will come upon every life. The preservation of the Lord will come upon every life. Lord, whatever the people do, they want to kill the dream. They want to kill the dreamer. And they want to sell anyone into any place. We pray that everywhere we go, as we're catapulted there, by any circumstance, when we get there, we're going to reign. When we get there, we're going to rule. It is that place where we are that we are going to bring the fulfillment of every dream in our lives this year in Jesus' name. You have promised us you will not leave us. You have promised us you will not forsake us until you have done everything you have spoken about concerning us. And Lord, I pray, every brother here, every sister here, every family here, every child here, every boy, every girl, oh Lord, I pray, there will be a fulfillment this year. There will be a promotion this year. There will be prosperity this year. There will be protection this year. Lord, everyone as we are walking from today, walking back home, walking back to school, walking back to college, walking back to university, walking back to the place of work, path of miracle, path of signs and wonders. Oh Lord, multiply your power in every life in Jesus' name. Now sickness, you are a strange thing in the life of any child of God. Over here we are saying no to sickness this year. No to deformity this year. No to accident this year. And Lord, every work of the devil you destroy from every life in Jesus' name. Everyone here, promote your people, Lord. Exalt your people, Lord. Lift up your people, Lord. And Lord, the promise of the Lord that your people, the head, they will not be tailed, fulfill it in Jesus' name. You will be first, you will not be last, oh Lord, fulfill it in Jesus' name. You will be strong, you will not be weak, oh Lord, fulfill it in Jesus' name. You will be fruitful, you will not be barren, fulfill it in Jesus' name. And the joy of the Lord will fill all your heart. And you go from strength to strength and from power to power, and from the natural to the supernatural in Jesus' name. And we 
pray, Lord, every day will be a day of miracles. Every day, a day of signs and wonders. Every day, a day of the presence of the Lord. A day, uh, every day will be a day of the prominence of the Lord. Every day will be a day of the preeminence of the Lord in every life in Jesus' name. We know it is not. We know it is not. We know it is not. We thank you, Lord, because we know it is not. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, Happy New Year to every one of you. Prosperous New Year for every, every one of you. Victorious New Year for every one of you. When I see you again, when we see you again, we all come back with our testimonies in Jesus' name.